My games PC has been gathering dust in an upstairs closet for a couple of years now, keeping the company of the suitcases, the re-gifting bag, and the four boxes of my 2021 photo calendar that I failed to sell. But I had cause to reanimate that PC recently to dig it out of cryostasis and boot it up once more. Once I'd reformatted the SSD and reinstalled Windows 10, damned if Windows 11's going on there, and once I'd used Edge to download Firefox, I headed over to the Zona Studio website to download a post-processing app. Yes, believe it or not, there's a Windows-only RAW editor, and I'd heard on the grapevine that it wasn't completely shit. Newsflash, grapevine was right. Okay, legends, you know the drill. Small print first so that we all know where we stand. This video is not sponsored in any way, shape or form. And I'm not a member of Zona's affiliate scheme or indeed any affiliate scheme. I downloaded the seven-day trial version of this app and did my best to put it through its paces through this stupid seven-day trial window. I don't censor my videos, and so if at some point I feel like a bit of robust Anglo-Saxon language is called for, I'll use it. So if you have conservative tendencies, you should probably bear that in mind. That being said, here's the TLDR. Zona Studio is a veritable kitchen sink of a photo editor and the most complete alternative to Adobe Lightroom that I've yet encountered. It has strong asset management chops with an endlessly configurable file and photo browser with filtering, quick search, batch rename, duplicate finding, grouping, auto stacking, batch filtering, and even an AI zoom tool for speedy editing. The built-in panorama and HDR tools are decent and there's strong print support too with options for photo books, calendars, prints, collages, contact sheets, and even magnets. The rock-solid digital asset management is backed up by an excellent raw engine with beautifully targeted sliders, comprehensive camera and lens profile support, and color grading. The only big feature gaps seem to be generative fill and AI denoising. There's a full selection of masks, both AI and traditional, AI sky background object and subject masks, and brush, radial, linear, colour and luminous masks on the traditional side. More importantly, those AI masks are accurate and fully supported by add, subtract and intersect functionality. It is priced at $60 per year on a subscription-only basis. You cannot buy it outright. I have to say that I think in this case the subscription is fair enough and the pricing is perfectly reasonable for such a capable app. I tested it on an aging 3.4 gigahertz Core i7 6700 PC with 32 gigs of RAM and an 8 gig RTX 3060 Ti GPU. And while that is certainly not a very up-to-date PC, it's not prehistoric. I did notice a bit of lag on the sliders and the screen refreshes. That slider lag is one of only two complaints I have about this app. The other is that it's not available on Mac OS. Those then are the bullet points. Let's dig into this app now and we'll kick things off with the interface and asset management. Zona has a dual catalog slash file management design that means you can just point the browser at a folder of files and edit them, or you can add them to the app's catalog system and enjoy features such as enhanced search capabilities. I'm pleased to say that the app fully respects embedded metadata and all of the keywords and ratings that I embedded via Lightroom were visible. The display is set up in a traditional way with file manager on the left, thumbnails or preview in the center, film strip at the bottom, and metadata on the right. But everything can be tweaked according to your taste and workflow. All the main elements can be switched on and off, and the individual modules can be rearranged in the order you prefer. I found the Asset Manager to be fast and responsive, 
with little in the way of lag when scrolling through directories of images. It does things a bit differently to Lightroom in terms of filtering, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I liked the various views available in the Asset Manager, Calendar, Folder, Keyword, and Location that made finding photos quick and easy. You can even configure the database to automatically detect objects when imported into the catalog, making masking a much more streamlined process. Within the Manager module, which serves as the main asset management tool, there are Map, Browser, Preview, and Full View modes. In Preview mode, you can compare multiple images with synchronized pan and zoom, and this mode also serves as an excellent culling mode with an auto-advanced toggle if you're using it to flag your pics. I'm pretty sure I've never seen as comprehensive a range of asset management features before in any post-processing app ever. It stands in stark contrast to apps like Capture One, Photo Lab, and Lightroom, which seem positively primitive by comparison. So yeah, Zona have packed in everything, including the kitchen sink on the asset side. But now we need to look at its raw chops because as my last few reviews have made painfully clear, if the fundamentals aren't solid, then the wheels fall off. And I'm pleased to report that in this case, the raw editor is capable and full featured. The first things that I tested were of course, the shadows and highlights or lights and shadows as they're referred to in Zona. And I was pleased to discover nicely targeted sliders with a lovely curve on them, making for precise and smooth edits. Hurrah! Better still, besides the obligatory light color and contrast tools, there's a heap of powerful extras, including targeted clarity, a halation of slider, polarization and color reconstruction, the latter of which boosts saturation around clipped areas so bright regions don't look gray. In addition, all of the usual tools are present and correct, split toning, tone curves, HSL sharpening, grain, vignette, and LUT support. The targeting of all of these tools was spot on, and I had no issues tweaking colors or tones with precise tweaks. The app has decent camera and lens support with full Fuji RAW support, including compressed RAWs, iPhone RAW, and newer cameras such as the recent Olympuses and Canons. I'll put a link to the full list in the description below. And here's a feature I love. If your camera's RAW format is not supported by the app, then it can be automatically converted using Adobe's GNG converter without leaving the app. I've tested pretty much every RAW editor on the planet at one time or another, and I've found that sometimes it doesn't matter how many features an app has, you just can't produce RAW edits that you're happy with. And I'm pleased to say that that definitely wasn't the case with Zona. I was able to quickly create pleasing edits on all of my test RAWs, including Canon, Fuji, Sony, and iPhone. These days, no RAW editor worth its salt can afford to ignore AI masking capabilities. And this was a feature that Zona added to their app earlier this year. It already had a full selection of the traditional masks, including a radial gradient mask that doesn't, and this may shock you DxO, have to be perfectly circular. In my testing, I found that the app's four AI mask types, sky, background, subject, and object, varied in accuracy, but were all highly configurable thanks to full and complete support for operator-based modifications, add, subtract, and intersect. The AI sky mask did well on easy tests with clearly delineated edges, such as mountain ranges, but failed the old in-between-the-tree branches test. Fortunately, you can compensate for the AI's inability to notice sky when it's behind a tree by using operators. Adding a luminance or color range is often a great fix for an inaccurate AI sky mask. The AI subject mask proved to be an outstanding performer with among the best hair detection I've seen in any AI masking tool in any editor. With even the most demanding photographs with flyaway hair on similarly shaded backgrounds, it did an amazing job of targeting everything correctly. And I applaud whoever did the machine learning training they've used in this app. 
AI object selection was absolutely top-notch too, easily differentiating objects such as humans, even when they're partially obscured by other humans. You really couldn't complain about Zona skimping on the features in this app, and I found myself continually discovering new stuff as I put the app through its paces. For instance, it has a feature similar to Photoshop's Median tool that enables you to analyze a stack of photographs of the same scene and remove noise or moving objects. There is full support for both exposure blending and tone mapping, both of which are far more configurable than Adobe Lightroom. If you shoot real estate photography, you'll greatly appreciate the inclusion of tone mapping for that high contrast HDR look. The panorama tool, however, wasn't nearly as capable as the blending tool. It did only moderately well on simple horizontal panos and failed completely on multi-row panos such as 21-shot drone panos. It also took an extraordinarily long time to fail to merge my panos, and even when it did succeed, there were banding issues where the frames overlapped. In October this year, Zona further increased the AI capabilities of their app by adding an AI upscaler. I, of course, tested this on my usual low-resolution test shots and found it to be tepidly competent. It has no options you can tweak. There's just width and height boxes and the method, which is either AI or not AI, and there is no face recovery. In my test, the upscaled images were quite severely smoothed and there was substantial loss of detail in faces, text, and pretty much everything else. And while some of those faces looked like punched pizzas, I didn't see any of the nightmarish generative deformities and hallucinating garbage which Topaz tends to sprinkle like cohoba dust at drum circle. It's not the worst AI upscaler I've used. That honor goes to Photoshop but they really need to work on detail retention if they want people to use it for anything other than novelty edits. The TARDIS-like capabilities of Zona Studio extend further than simple asset management and raw editing and extend into Photoshop-like layer-based editing, print and video. The Photoshop-like features are in the Editor tab where you can add adjustment layers, and apply effects, filters, or vectors such as shapes or text. There's a decent selection of effects such as tilt shift, high pass, pixelized textures and borders, but most of the stuff just feels like novelty gimmicks to me and a waste of space in an otherwise excellent app. If you're working with a non-raw file such as a JPEG, then the adjustments menu could prove useful with levels, curves, color temperature, sharpen, and blur tools, along with fixes for noise, chromatic aberration, and vignetting. In the print tab, you can find a range of project-based options which connect directly to Zona's own print fulfillment services. But I couldn't speak to the quality of those products, and anyway, the templates seem pretty restrictive. The options include a photo book, a calendar, and a canvas print. But I think the contact sheet is of the most interest because it's actually useful and enables you to output direct to PDF. There's also a video module and that's all I have to say about that. Before I sat down to write this review, I decided to find out what other people were saying about Zona Studio here on YouTube and I was taken aback at the almost complete absence of content on the site. Being a Mac-based photographer, I think I've got a pretty good excuse for having never discovered this Windows-only application. But I have no idea what everyone else's excuse is. Are we all using MacBooks? Even more bizarrely, this app is 31 bloody years old. It started out life as Zona Media Explorer in 1994. I was still going to raves in 1994. And it was then rebranded as Zona Photo Studio in 2003. And it's quietly ticked over year after year with, I must assume, a decent level of profitability with the occasional review in computer magazines, but largely untroubled by anything as high profile as a YouTube review. In any case, lack of visibility being damned, I'm pleased to be able to shine a bit of light on an app that offers a properly 
viable alternative to the better known asset and raw editors. As I worked my way through all of my regular tests, I was endlessly discovering new features and thoughtful touches that developers built in. It's almost like they gave a shit about their app and about the people that would end up using it. And that experience was in stark contrast to the software I've been testing lately, which feels like any moment a massive middle finger's going to appear on screen and a sample voice will scream, fuck you! What further differentiates this app from its competition is that the multitude of features do not come at the cost of quality. I've regularly criticized developers who add feature after feature to their apps, all of which suck, and which suck at the expense of the basic features like, you know, raw editing, which also sucks. But here's an app that seems to have almost every feature ever conceived, and the vast majority of them are great. Zona have got the core elements correct. The raw editing tools are refined, responsive, and do exactly what I expect them to do. Are the results as good as something like Photolab or Capture One? No, not quite. Nobody's yet got close to those apps' secret source, but Zona's edits are still excellent. There's decent support for cameras and lenses, and if there isn't support, then they've thoughtfully included a workaround. The asset management is as comprehensive as it gets but it's also endlessly configurable, which means you can use it the way you like, not through some enforced workflow the developers lock you into. The AI masking is excellent, let down only slightly by that sky mask and its blind spot for tree branches. But let's be honest, all the other apps struggle with that one too. As I look at the runtime of this video, I realize I haven't even mentioned batch exif editing, the granular sorting tool, the AI close-up tool, the intelligence stacking tool, the map mode with track log capabilities, the batch filter, the virtual copies tool, the export window, perspective control tools, the nicely designed crop tool, the smoothing brush, the liquify mode, the AI presets, the AI auto mode, or the fact that the histogram has six fucking modes. Yes. This app will cost you an annual fee. It's subscription only. But as I said earlier, I think it's entirely justified in this case. Based on the release notes, this developer has a well-locked-in schedule with meaningful updates and genuinely useful new features rolled out on a quarterly basis. For 60 bucks a year, just 5 bucks a month, legends, I have to say that Zona Studio feels like a bargain. It's great to see a developer going the extra mile for their customers and delivering an app that quietly achieves levels of quality that even the mighty Adobe haven't reached yet. It would be awesome to see this app ported over to macOS so that us Apple tragics could get in on the action too. But in the meantime, Windows users, you know what to do. And that will do us for this look at Zona Studio for Windows. Are you one of those people that have been quietly enjoying this app for three fucking decades? Why didn't anyone tell me? If you're an existing customer, let me know in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, do give it a like. If you've got value from it, consider subscribing to my little channel for more photo, video, and a drone related content from me. Till the next time, guys. Ta ta.